Hello everybody, uh, Smith here and welcome back to some more BD Armoury. Today we're taking a look at missiles. In the background is just a fight between two sets of my Lynxes, my new craft, just as I try to tweak that, um, just get rid of some of the bugs in it. Uh, one of them turns around and sort of kills itself with a missile straight off the bat and then one of the other teams sort of falls to a missile and then a bit of hand-to-hand -hand combat sort of sets the fight uh, on its way to the end. So yeah, a few more creases to iron out there, but uh, I'm sure we'll get there. What was I saying? Yes, missiles. Today we're going to be looking at a couple of ways you, well, might or might not be able to get a little bit of an edge on your opponent. Uh, we're going to see whether or not these have any effect in a highly scientific, um, well, slightly scientific, well, it's just me asking about, basically, and I wouldn't read too much into it. Um, let's get going. So here we are in the space plane hangar with one of my... Um, <laughs> One of my new and improved, but not quite the finished article, links is. And if we just take a look under the wings and right-click on one of these AMRAMs, uh, I just want to draw your attention to two of the settings on this. First of all, detonation distance override, and secondly, drop time. Um, and we're going to go and see how we can optimise these to, to get the most out of your missiles. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So we're here on the runway where I've set up a 3v3 between two different versions of my Lynx craft. Um, one we've washed in regular detergent, and the other where we've gone and uh, greatly increased the detonation distance override on the missiles. I've set the AMRAMs to 38, I've set the, uh, the Sidewinders to 30. I think they're about 10 and 8 uh, by default. Why have I done this? Well, most missiles will miss. Um, and a glancing blow is better than no blow at all, so by increasing the range at which they will, uh, the distance between the missile and the uh, and the target at which they'll explode, you increase the chances of them doing any damage at all. Um, the Amrams have a blast radius, I think it's about a little over 43, the Sidewinders, I think it's 36, so we're leaving, what, sort of between 6 and 8 metres uh, hopefully a blast radius for those missiles to do some damage. That's the theory anyway. It's supposed to give you a bit of an advantage. Let's go, uh, let's go test it out. So Ghosty Kerman in one of our uh, regular Lynxes comes around and gets his own volley of uh, two AMRAMs away. I've done a lot of testing with this just in case the results here don't go as we expect, and it does seem to give you um, a significant advantage, although not a ridiculously big one. Ghosty Kerman and that other Link's getting really up close and personal there. Oh my god, what, is, what are they doing? Guys, give each other a little bit of space. No missile damage with this first volley. Ghosty Kerman will come around, try and get away some of his own. One of the Lynxes has gone due to missile damage. Um, and another one of them has as well. Okay, so that's looking like... It looks like it was something of a glancing blow on uh, Ion Kerman's uh, links there. So, so far, you know, everything's going as our hypothesis would suggest it, uh, it should. We are within gun range now, though, so Ghosty Kerman might have the opportunity to level things up. Does get some damage into one of the, uh, one of the modified Lynxes comes around one of the regular links has crashed into the ground though so one of them will have a bit of a two-on-one situation the sound bug strikes again i hate i hate the sound bug um yes i am coming still with weapons no no missiles but does still have guns although does have an incredibly unstable craft is managing to distract one of the oh my god that's a lot of debris <laughs> coasty Kerman. <laughs> was in trouble. One of the modified Lynxes decides <laughs> he's gonna sort this out mono in mono and yeah that's the end. That's pretty much the end of the unmodified Lynxes so it would appear on the basis of that and the previous testing I've done that yeah expanding the uh, the blast radius of uh, sorry um, increasing the uh, Increasing the detonation distance of your missiles does provide some advantage, although not a ridiculous one. Anyway, there were uh, two things we wanted to test, so um, let's go take a look at the other one. 
This next one's a bit of an experiment. Uh, it's something I saw suggested on my Discord. Uh, link in the description, by the way. Um, again, we have two sets of otherwise identical craft lined up. This time I read Hawks. Uh, this is the ordinary version and the one over here. This is going to require some explaining. So these are set up to fire two missiles per target. And the best thing about missiles is they kind of keep your opponent on the ropes. So instead of like two per target and then they explode and then you fire another two, it would be good if you could keep just like a steady trickle of missiles firing at them. And this is what this next experiment kind of tries to accomplish. And I'm doing this through the uh, the missile drop time, the time between it detaching from the missile rail and actually firing up its engines. On the left hand side, these five missiles all have a drop, their drop time set to zero. On the right hand side, these all have their drop time set to the maximum, which is five seconds. So it should fire the left hand missile first, then it should launch the right hand missile. This should fire straight away. This should fire five seconds plus however much delay there was between the missiles firing. So it's just, it just sort of covers a greater period of time, hopefully helps to keep the enemy on the on the ropes um, a little bit more consistently. That's a theory at least. As I said, this is a complete experiment, just something I saw uh, mentioned on the Discord. I have no idea how this is going to go, uh, how this is going to turn out. So, um, well, I suppose we should find out, shouldn't we? The battle starts, we are riding with the adjusted Red Hawks, one missile away. Um, that shouldn't have happened. Yet they've launched one from each side. That should have very, very different drop times. Let's see if that works with the next volley. Oh my god, one of the Red Hawks has gone already. There goes one. Where's the next one? That was the left-hand one. I want to see what happens if they launch the right-hand one. Yep, there it goes. It takes a while to actually start tracking its target. Oh, that one was close. That one was close. Again, away with one sidewinder. The other one takes a while to warm up. Oh my word, that just got absolutely shredded. And I think there might be a bit of friendly fire in there as well. But it is, it is, no, it's not three against two, is it? It's, um, hmm. Yeah, I think this is the Red Hawk that got the friendly fire. It's, it's not doing so well. I mean, it was, it was a pretty convincing victory. I wasn't able to see how much of it was down to those missiles. We did see it take effect with sort of the Amrams and the Sidewinders firing in one after the other. I'm, I'm going to claim that as a tentative success. Um, we might get a bit more opportunity to, uh, to see if it had any effect in the next fight, which we'll, um, we'll move on to now. So, to further test our results, uh, but mainly, if I'm being honest, just for the hell of it, we are sending up um, three of my ordinary lynxes against uh, three of the Red Hawks with both the uh, the proximity missiles and the, the, the drop time thing. Let's, um, let's get them up into the air. Here we go then, following Ghosty Kerman in the uh, the unmodified links, and I wanted to, um, for the drop time thing, I wanted to follow in the target craft, because the whole point of that is that just to keep, keep the target craft from dodging missiles, not giving it a chance to come around, launch its own, making sure that when it gets actually into, uh, into gunfighting range, it's still carrying the weight of all those missiles, won't be so manoeuvrable. And, uh, and all that jazz, basically. And it looks like it's kind of working, at least with Ghosty Come. And Ghosty Come is not getting the opportunity to get a second volley away. It might. This time, though, it's they're pretty close in. Has to go for the Sidewinders. Dodges one. And, yeah, we are within gun range already. Ghosty Come still having to pop countermeasures. Looks like there is a, um, a Sidewinder coming in from somewhere. Comes about. Gets a smattering does have one of the Red Hawks on his tail. That's not good news for Ghosty Kerman. Lost a lot of parts, having to pop some countermeasures again. More missiles coming in. Ah, I can't see where that's coming from. There we go. Although, um, 
Vane's falling to the ground just to dodge those missiles and now gets into some real falling to the ground. Manages to turn it around though. Josh Kerman, something paused. I thought something was about to explode. Josh Kerman trying desperately to line up one of the uh, one of the Red Hawks. It looks like, yeah, still got one of his Amrams. Not really managed to get uh, the second volley away. That that Link's still in a lot of trouble. Still just about managing to stick in the fight though. Josh Kerman pulls around, pulls around hard, has one of the Red Hawks in his sights, does some damage, does some more damage, bits falling off of it. See if we can find that particular Red Hawk. Ah, it's in a sorry way, but it's not lethal. Um, yeah. What the hell was that? That was, that was, I think that was that damage links. This Red Hawk making himself an absolute sitting duck though. Sorry, herself. Luna Kerman making herself an absolute sitting duck. Although the Lynxes, I think, have enough on their plate at the moment. Ion Kerman. Ion Kerman has been shredded. Josh Kerman. Josh Kerman in the last remaining healthy Lynx. Um, spoke too soon. Josh Kerman in the last remaining flyable Lynx. Didn't lose too much. Just sort of that engine intake, I think. Yeah, still got most of his other parts. Should be able to keep flying. We'll have the attention of two Red Hawks now, though. Um, mm, spins out a bit. That's not good. Now Josh Kerman making himself a sitting duck. Trouble with the air intakes. Yeah. I think this is going to be a bit of a duck shoot for the remaining Red Hawks. Only a matter of time. <sighs> I just eject by now. I'd be feeling so sick. Joshka, I don't think you're going to manage to pull out of this one, buddy. Who'll get him first, the ground or the Red Hawks? Um, surprisingly enough, looks like the ground. Although, yeah, I just, I just cut throttle. I would, I would just cut the. Let's just cut the throttle there. So yeah, any uh, any any fight you can walk away from and all that. Um, although I think the Red Hawks are still coming to um, coming to try kill him off, so we might we might try running away from this one. Anyway, uh, so uh, oh yeah, so not quite the. Um, not the definitive answer I was hoping for on the drop time thing, although it does seem to have something of an effect. Same with the uh, same with the um, proximity missile explosions. Really, it doesn't appear to be anything massive. Although in these dogfights, anything that can give you the edge, really. Um, anyway, that will be all for today. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, uh, please consider liking, subscribing, uh, following me on Twitter, getting involved with the aforementioned Discord, great KSP and BD Armory community. There, links in the description as there will be to the uh, to the Patreon and PayPal, in case you want to help support the channel, everything gratefully received. Those Red Hawks are still not letting up. Yeah, I'd get a bit more distance if I were you, Josh. Um, I will be back soon with some more uh, BD Armory, but until then, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.